Hello, everyone, and welcome to another segment of our magical lecture series on the Global Illumination Council. I am Bernard Alvarez. I forgot what I was doing for a minute. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, welcome. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing different types of healing modalities. And as you can see up there, we're uh, going to be talking a little bit about Reiki, Pranic, and Chakra healing. But before we get into the actual class discussion, I wanted to just let everybody know that uh, I don't know if we're going to be releasing these weekly for a while. It may be every other week. It might be twice a week. Uh, I, due to uh, circumstances beyond my control, actually, you all know the earth changes that are happening, uh, my attention has been focusing on sending a lot of healing energy to the earth, which is probably a great time to have this particular class. But um, with that in mind, um, it, it's been very, um, it's been very distracting, and uh, I, I feel that my uh, my attention needs to be toward um, other things to help humanity as a whole. And of course, these classes are helping humanity as a whole. I hope. But uh, as far as scheduling, we're going to have to see how that goes, and I will do my best to put them out once a week. Uh, everyone has completed the first, uh, pretty much completed the first um, module which is the first eight classes, and those are really the most important ones. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit more later. Anyway, uh, for those of you that don't know, I am a certified Reiki master and have been for over, well, about 12 years now, I guess. And um, the one thing I like about Reiki, and actually, before I even get into the details of each particular one, let me just say that all of these are, are very um, overlapping. The, the systems, the modalities, the way that they're done, the, uh, they all basically work with uh, your chi energy or your ki, whatever you wish to call it. And it's really just a matter of being the channel of that energy, of that chi energy. So if you haven't seen the first module, the first eight classes, I would highly um, highly recommend that you watch that because those are the classes that kind of awaken your, your subtle energy field and teach you how to be more sensitive to being a channel of energy. With that said, uh, let's talk a little bit about Reiki. And uh, just so you know, we're going to be discussing an overview of these. Uh, and I'm going to go into some detail as far as technique and whatnot. So uh, this is not going to be a very um, detailed class per se on each particular uh, type of healing. With that said, Reiki healing has been around, well, it's, it is believed it has been around for thousands of years and was uh, rediscovered by uh, Usui, which is uh, the, the, the type of Reiki that I do, Usui Reiki. Um, it is passed down from Reiki master to student and uh, so forth. Uh, supposedly, there has been an unbroken chain of these, uh, um, I guess, you, I, initiations or attunements, whatever they're called, whatever you would like to call them, quite honestly. And what what happens in the attunement, and I'll tell you what the attunement is first, and uh, maybe that'll help you understand a little bit about the, the Reiki practice itself. The Reiki attunement itself, uh, there's three degrees, the first, second, and third degree. And what happens is the practitioner or the Reiki master is basically going into your, into your um, subtle energy field, opening your crown chakra, and then putting um, in very powerful energy symbols, um, which are, are basically uh, Asian calligraphy symbols. And if you look on any Reiki website, you'll see them. Uh, some of them keep them secret until you get your attunement, and some of them we'll give them all to you out publicly. Um, I feel that the only reason why I would ever keep uh, something like that secret or or not give it to the student is just so they wouldn't focus on that until they were ready to focus on that. But, you know, as far as, you know, secret, hush, hush, I, I think it's just a matter of being a good teacher and guiding your student and having them focus in the right direction uh, with the lesson pertaining to the lesson that they need to be learning. So with that said, what Reiki does, and uh, for those of you that don't know, it's basically the word means, uh, and a loose definition of the word means uh, energy healing, for lack of a better term. Key is, is chi, which is your energy. 
Um, and now everyone practices a little bit different. Some people prefer to do hands-on Reiki. I prefer, I am a hands-on Reiki person. I do feel that uh, healing touch is very much a part of it. Uh, I do believe, though, in distance healing with energy, of course, now that we're doing all these global meditations and trying to heal the heart of our Mother Earth, this is really um, a needed uh, belief system in, a, in order for this to facilitate correctly. So when we are doing Reiki or when, well, let's talk a little bit about Reiki. Uh, the actual energy first. It is believed, and this has to do with all three of these, and I'll say this again, they kind of all overlap with each other. The belief is, or the understanding is, and mind you that these uh, practices have been around for thousands and thousands of years, uh, that the body's energy field or energy um, meridians, uh, I would highly suggest that um, you do a search and look for a map of the body meridians and the acupressure slash acupuncture points so you can see where the energy points are. Um, needless, the, the, the idea is, is that when we are in this ease, whether it be, um, whether it be physical and or emotional or spiritual, it has to do with the chi body or the energy body having blockages or being out of balance. And you can see how this would overlap with uh, chakras as well as uh, pranic and reiki. Uh, for that matter, pranic is just another version of energy healing and deals with the same essential uh, idea. I believe that the only difference is, is uh, a, a tradition, basically tradition. Uh, the one's not better than the other, and uh, I think they all work just fine. Um, when I was, uh, before I was a Reiki master, and before I even got involved in Reiki, I was doing prana, prana healing, working with prana, which is the, uh, I believe it's the Indian term for, um, for energy. So, when the body is in dis-ease or disharmony or in balance, you'll, you'll notice that uh, dis-ease, the word disease, is that word dis-ease. It's, it's, there's a discomfort, there's an imbalance, there's something that whether it be an emotional Klingon or it be um, an energy block or an emotional energy block that's not allowing the energy to flow freely, what will happen is that the body will have, a, well, in the blockage, the energy builds up and creates a, an imbalance in that particular region of the body. Uh, the same goes for the emotional aspect of this. What I, what, I, what I feel is very important for all of us as practitioners, of heal, as healers and healers of the earth, light workers, uh, Wic Wiccans, pagans, star seeds, whatnot, I think the most important thing is for us in the, individually to keep our energy uh, balanced, to keep our energy uh, focused, not focused, I'm sorry, uh, in balance, in balance, not in balance. <laughs> And uh, to be focused on where we do have any type of obstacles or blockages within our energy body. One of the ways that I do this, and I, I think I've spoken about my meditation practices, and um, what I try to do every morning and every evening is uh, when I say I channel the light or whatnot, it's also kind of doing a, a body scan of my own body, kind of going into a meditative state, and sensing all the different parts of my body, sensing, you know, anywhere down from my feet, up through my knees, up through my, and you know the routine if you followed uh, the earlier classes, and by all means, please refer back to those when we do the full body relaxation near the beginning of the, of the studies. And by focusing on that and doing kind of like an energy scan, you get to know your own uh, your own imbalance or where you're having any kind of blocks and whatnot. Now, the way that this is, um, I guess, uh, conveyed as a practitioner doing it on somebody else is you would do the same thing. And that's basically the way that I would do it also. Um, when, I have a, um, when I have a client that I'm doing a Reiki healing session on, I will basically, actually, let's walk through that a little bit. We're going to walk through that a little bit. The first thing that you want to do is you want to make them comfortable. Have them lie down or sit in a chair and get comfortable. 
Um, I, I, ambiance is obviously an important aspect of it. If you want to put on some nice mellow music in the background, maybe light a scented candle, something to that effect, dim the lights, creating a peaceful env environment. Um, a very funny, uh, ever so quickly, very funny I, story I had was uh, I had I had a client who was I worked in. A, of course, I worked in the fashion industry for a while, so I had a very, a lot of very uptight corporate types coming to me, and I was uh, uh, I was doing Reiki at uh, one one or two of the separate uh, salons that I worked at, and I had a client who was very. She even said she's an A type personality, and if I could get her to relax, that that would be enough. Well. Not only did I get her to relax, she fell asleep. And when she woke up, she literally walked out with a bounce in her step. Uh, she couldn't believe it. She was very surprised. Uh, she couldn't understand what had happened if she was just tired or she passed out. But needless to say, it was a combination of the environment, the music, and, and of course, you know, laying down and relaxing and having somebody put their, their hands on you. So it, it, if, if it was only that, and of course we're talking about, you know, having the energy uh, move through them as well. So needless to say, when a client uh, comes and lays down, if you're going to be doing uh, this on your friends or, uh, you know, or if you actually are going to consider doing this as a career, you're going to want to create the right environment for them, have them very, uh, be very relaxed. And what I normally told my clients to do or tell to this day is I just tell them to close their eyes, take a few deep breaths, and uh, just tell their mind to allow the Reiki to work. Allow, give themselves permission to heal. Give my body permission to heal. I give my body permission to heal itself. Um, with that being said, normally what is done, and I'm not going to go through the whole hand placements um, aspect of it, but what I will say is, uh, please, by all means, uh, I will recommend uh, the Diane, I believe it's Diane, is it Diane Weiss or Diane Stein? I believe it's Diane Stein who wrote Essential Reiki, and uh, I found that to be one of the most helpful books I've read. It's very easy to, uh, it's very easy to read. It's very user friendly. It's not too textbooky. A lot of them are very textbooky, and uh, plus the fact that she's a, she's a pagan and, a, and, a, and refers to the energy like the goddess and whatnot. So it's a very gentle uh, expression of how to teach Reiki. And when we are about to do the Reiki, you want to make sure that you ask your client if you have permission to touch them, or they have to have permission. You know, they. You tell them you're going to, if you are a toucher, if you're a toucher, a lot of people don't touch when they do Reiki. Um, you don't want to shock them, and that's the reason why I'm saying that. Um, once you start laying on the hands, now of course I usually start, after I do the body scan, like I'll just run my hands, let's see, I'll run my hands over their body, their entire length of the body to kind of get a feel for where there might be any energy blockages. Um, at that point, I would go back to the crown and put my hands on their crown and work my way down to the palms of their feet, the balls of the feet, whatever the terminology is that you're used to using. Um, while you're doing that, though, it's very important that you don't walk away and you never take both hands off at once. If you do need to change positions or anything to that effect, keep one hand on their, um, keep one hand on them. Don't lose the connection. It is an energy connection. Now, as far as being the practitioner, as far as getting yourself ready to do the actual um, healing, uh, normally what I like to do is I like to put a couple drops of essential oil, usually like lavender or uh, sandalwood, something you know to that effect. And of course, you know I'll rub my hands together, warm them up. Uh, you don't want to place your cold hands on anybody, even if you're not placing them on somebody. Uh, they can feel the temperature, you know, so if your hands are cold. More, a lot of people will say that, they're, that my hands heat up uh, when, they're, when, they're on, when they're on them, and their body does seem to feel a sense of heat. Uh, but very, you know, very, uh, everybody is very different in how they perceive it and they receive it. So some people may feel heat, some people may feel cold, uh, some people may not feel every, anything. Um, it's very funny that when I do it, um, and I'm sure many of you out there who have been practicing probably get the same uh, same response, 
that they feel that there are other entities in the room uh, also, like standing around the table or sitting around the chair or whatever, uh, wherever it is that they're laying. Um, and again, for me, when I'm getting started and I'm putting in you know, the oil, warming up my hands, I'm going into a meditation and I call on my guides. Uh, for me, it's the emissaries of light and I ask them to come to me and to aid me with this, uh, with this healing and allow me to be a channel for their energy. So again, while you want your client to, um, or your patient, or whatever you want to call them, the receiver, to uh, to give themselves permission to receive the healing, you of course want to tell yourself and give yourself permission to be a channel for the energy. Um, a lot of times people will use their own energy, and I just recently saw a class where this person was talking about raising their energy and forcing it, and that's very, very bad for you. Um, I, I, um, I feel, actually I know, because I've done it myself, um, when you're using your own energy, you're going to tire yourself, you're going to fatigue yourself, and uh, a lot of times it's not really the essence of universal energy, it's emotional energy from you. And when if you're using your emotional energy, you might send off stuff that's, it's really nobody else's necessity to have on them. So try to be aware. And let yourself just be the channel of the energy and evoke, you know, the energy of healing, whether it be through your God, Goddess, Spirit Guides, Angels, um, what, Buddha, or Krishna, whatever it is uh, that you feel a connection to, you can go ahead and allow yourself to be the channel for that. Um, so basically, that's... a uh, that's the gist of Reiki. Now, let me tell you a little bit about um, some tricks that I've learned with Reiki. Um, first of all, we are not permitted, of course, we live in a day and age of Illuminati control of everything. Uh, we are not allowed to say it's healing. Uh, there, we are not allowed to say that it is medical. Uh, it is literally for entertainment and relaxation. Um, I, at least in the United States. I don't know about the rest of the world. Maybe in Asia, they're a little bit more open to that in the East and maybe even the Middle East. But here in the West, we have to be very careful. So um, I'll say that now. Here's a discourse. Here's the, the disclaimer. This has not been proven by the FDA to heal anything. Okay. <laughs> even though I will say there are many, many documentations of, uh, I, I believe... When I was going through, there was a, a video that we were watching, forgive me, of uh, some Reiki healers in Japan. And you, I think they did an experiment. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was a video of an experiment that they did with several uh, Reiki masters putting their hands on a tumor, and you could see the tumor dissolving in the, in the, I believe it was like a CAT scan or whatever it is they give the pregnant women. I, I'm sorry, I don't remember what the term is for all the ladies out there. But um, sonogram, there we go. Anyway, um, it does, it's been proven, but of course, you know, legally they don't want you to admit that it's been proven. So you, you have to let people know that if you are charging money for this or anything like that, um, you, you are literally doing it for relaxation and, uh, and uh, stress relief or whatnot. Uh, with that said, also, there are many places. Um, I don't know um, exactly where anymore. I just remember that when I was in Florida, we had a big uproar that the um, massage community wanted all the Reiki practitioners to get certified in massage. Uh, I found that to be redundant. Um, it doesn't have, Reiki has nothing to do with massage. But they want to lump it all under that um, paradigm of, uh, so they could, you know, uh, what's the word, uh, regulated. And you had to be a registered masseuse and whatnot. And of course, it's all for profit and whatnot. But um, I think it's fair to say that as a study, it's worth doing. I believe that um, in the coming years, we're going to need more and more people like, uh, like us who uh, know how to do either some type of healing, you know, healing hands, uh, Reiki healing, pranic healing, chakra healing, and whatnot. So with that said, um, one of the first things that I, I picked up on that I was able to do with Reiki, and I think it's a great place for everybody to start, and whether it be, uh, whether you're initiated or not, whether you've had your, your, um, your attunement or not, um, is the, uh, the treating a headache. And it's very amazing how, uh, how quickly this works, and, and it, 
For some people, it'll last. It'll be gone completely, and for some others, it won't. But um, what I discovered early on was um, I had a neighbor who was getting migraines um, quite often. And uh, I, I think I had just become a Reiki master. And I was like, oh, here, let me do this, and I'll do it for you. And uh, I basically just put one hand on their crown and one hand on the back of their neck. So I'm trying to do a sideways thing here. So doing that, you know, doing all the preparation and whatnot and just and feeling it. Now, a lot of people ask, you know, how do I know when it's time for me to take my hands off? It's kind of the same thing or the same way that you know that, um, that you're done shuffling a deck of cards. You know, when we talked about Torah last week, I talked about that. You just know. You feel it. Uh, you don't want to force it. You don't want to think about it. It's got, it's got to flow. It's got to be natural. Allow it to be natural. So when you're doing, even if you're doing the, the migraine release is what I call, um, keep your hands on there. Uh, sometimes it'll be five minutes. Sometimes it'll be one minute. Uh, so I've had it where I've had to keep my hands on for up to 15 minutes just standing there because their bodies really needed it. And uh, maybe... Maybe I needed it, too. Who knows? I find that another thing is I find also that after I do a Reiki treatment, I feel fantastic like I've gotten Reiki as well. So anyway, so that's uh, basically uh, a little bit about Reiki. Um, I, I, you know, I really would suggest if you want to learn more is to go to a uh, go to a Reiki master and take the course. Uh, be very careful, though. A lot of people overcharge. Uh, I know that... Um, uh, as we are coming to this new paradigm, the prices are getting lower because people are realizing it's it's just not right to charge $900 for a Reiki course. Um, quite honestly, when I teach, uh, when I when I first became a Reiki master, I was charging 100, 200, 300, 100 for the first degree, 200 for the second, and 300 for the third. Uh, I will say though that now in my awakened, my reawakened, I guess paradigm. Uh, I couldn't do it for more than $50 a degree, uh, just because, I mean, I understand that maybe I'm doing a seven-hour workshop, but if I'm doing a seven-hour workshop for five people at $50, that's more than enough money for one day's work. Nobody needs to be greedy. So we need to um, really think about the ethics of and the integrity of the Reiki Masters as well. There is a, um, a school in Florida that is known, horribly known, for um, overcharging their, their students. Uh, and I believe they're mixed in with the Reiki Institute in New York City. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, this one is in uh, Fort Lauderdale. And uh, she's a, a ruthless uh, uh, entrepreneur, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And uh, unfortunately, things like that give Reiki a bad name and give teaching Reiki a bad name. So, again, you know, if you feel you're being overcharged, you know, you want to question that. The same thing goes what I said earlier, like several weeks ago, you know, finding a high priest or a coven or whatever, a, a spiritual teacher. You've got to feel that they're not in it for themselves, that they're doing it as a service unto others because... I mean, that's really what we're here for now. We have not, we're not at a place where we can be a service for self anymore. We need to be a service for others. And uh, Reiki is a way to do that. And teaching it is a way to do that. Um, as, and, and as I talk about finding a Reiki uh, course or teacher or whatnot, beware of long distance attunements. Um, I, I personally, don't like the idea of paying someone $500 to give me an attunement over the internet. I, I, I don't feel it. I'm, I'm just telling you what my gut instinct is. And 99% of the time, my gut's pretty right. Uh, I don't see, I don't know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But um, I just feel, you know, it's too easy of a chance for them to pocket the money, say they did it, and then nothing has happened to you. So I would be very, very concerned if someone was trying to offer you long-distance attunements. A long-distance class, that's one thing. I remember a couple years ago I was doing, I had offered to do a long-distance training, but they would have to fly in to see me to get the attunement. But um, anyway, so there's lots of ways to, to teach it. There are a lot of courses out there. I know that two of our admins just went to, to two different style teachers, one of them did it over a two or three week period. Another person did it over a weekend period. 
And, you know, they create these nice packages. And don't get me wrong, that's another thing. If you're going to pay $300, uh, make sure it's like a weekend retreat, you know. <laughs> uh, bed and breakfast, getaway, Reiki, you know, attunement type thing. But, uh, you know, um, I personally, I do it over, a, a, I believe it's like a five to seven hour class, depending on how many people. And I just do each one in one day. So there's going to be a lot of different styles out there. Don't get confused. Follow your gut. Um, follow your instinct. But in the meantime, go ahead, practice, you know, connect, you know, allowing the energy to flow through your palms. Uh, I'm going to show you the one symbol that says put the energy here. And a lot of people get very fussy over whether it's counterclockwise or clockwise. I'm just going to do it the way that I do it. And if it comes out clockwise or counterclockwise for you, then so be it. Oh, I did it counterclockwise. Ooh. But uh, <laughs> that's one of the symbols. Uh, that's one of the first symbols you're going to learn. And um, what, you, what you do, what you can do to get you going, and uh, again, this is just a little trick and tip that I do for myself, is I draw the symbol on my palm and I tap it into my palm, which is kind of the way we do it when we do the attunements anyway. So it's kind of like reawakening that energy on my palm. Uh, you can also use it on the crown chakra and, uh, you know, put the energy in there. The, the symbol basically means put the power here, put the energy here. So that's basically what that means. Um, but it's one of the first symbols you're going to learn. And it's a great symbol to work with and to practice with. And they get, I think it's the first symbol that we give. Uh, most of us will give as a Reiki uh, master. I just realized I have my hair behind my ears after all that blood drying. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> anyway, um, pranic healing is basically the same thing. It is a, uh, it's again, it's a different school of thought. It works with the concept of prana, which is the same concept of chi. It's the energy life force. Uh, it's, um, it, it is taught again also from teacher to teacher. There are many different tra traditions uh, pertaining to prana as well, pranic healing. Uh, I found it to be more flexible when I first started. Uh, the information back in the, when did I start doing this? In the early 90s, I guess, uh, was a lot easier to come by. So that's when I started working with. And um, one of the things that um, someone had taught, a pranic, a pranic healer had taught me, and a technique that they had taught me, and I'm going to share it with you now, it was a visualization technique, and it was amazing. I, I, I literally healed uh, swollen ankles. Uh, well, I'll give you an example. I'm going to give you an anecdote of uh, one particular uh, instance that I had. I was with a friend of mine in Florida who was, you know, a skateboarder, and they had one of those half-pike things, you know, in their front lawn, in their front yard, and uh, he fell. Twisted his ankle. Uh, within minutes, it was starting to blow up, and uh, his family knew what I did and knew that I was uh, practicing witch or whatever you want to call it back then. And uh, they're like, "Can you do something?" I'm like, "Yeah, I can do something for him." And uh, all I did was I put my hands on the ankle, and I had him close his eyes, and with him. Now, this is a great technique to do with anybody, and it works great with uh, children, especially children, because children have a really good sense of this, is to have them close their eyes, and you close your eyes with them, and follow along with them, and have them tell them, I would like you to create the outline of where the pain begins and ends. So with them, in your mind's eye, try to you know follow their mental process, and tell them to... Create an outline of where the pain begins and where the pain ends. And once they get a very clear picture, you know, you ask them, do you have a good, a good boundary of where your pain is? Have you circled it? Have you created a, a circle, an oval, whatever, a boundary? Tell them, you know, have them focus on the pain and then have them focus outside of the boundary where there is no pain. And then little by little, you tell them to say, okay, starting at one point, Let's begin erasing that line. And little by little, you go around the circumference of the diameter or whatever, the circumference of the pain, and you begin to erase the line. And keeping your hands on the particular spot, um, giving them comfort and whatnot, uh, when they're done, they it should be gone. 
and uh, I, I can tell you that when I was done, the swelling, the swelling was gone, and within 15 minutes, he was back outside on that crazy half pike, and I'm like, oh, great, I'm not doing it again, but <laughs> at least not tonight, but... <laughs> It's a great technique. I, actually, I want to thank, uh, I forgot who it was, but someone reminded me of this technique a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, oh, my God, that was the first technique I did in my 20s, you know. But anyway, that's a wonderful technique to work with. Um, also, um, chakra healing. Now, chakra healing works along the same lines, except it's going to be working more along the balance and the energy of your kundalini. And your kundalini, and we've covered this in the previous classes, please refer back to, I guess, I think it was like class three that we talked about it. Um, the energy centers. And the energy centers within the kundalini, which is along your spine, and each one represents a specific energy. With one being more active than the other, you're going to get imbalances. Um, I know uh, back in my 20s, I think most people in their 20s, my energy was very in the lower chakras, you know, sex and money and, you know, all these things, you know, the, the drive to survive, the drive to, to uh, be sexual and whatnot. So I used to have to put a lot of, I had to do a lot of energy work with my heart chakra and my crown chakra to try to, try to create a balance. Uh, then as I moved into my early 30s, my energy kept going up into the higher realms and I wasn't being grounded. So, you know, we have to, you know, and it changes, you know, throughout your years as you get older, depending on your age or whatnot. But you can, you can facilitate keeping them balanced throughout your lifetime. Um, so one of the techniques that I use with uh, chakra balancing is crystals and tones. And what you can do... Uh, and again, this is just an overview. I would suggest you uh, go back on the internet and research it or go to a bookstore to find uh, more information on it. Uh, with the chakra balancing, what you can do is find the associated stone with that particular chakra center. Uh, now, I'm saying this for somebody else. If you were to do this technique on someone else, you would get the crystal associated with that particular, that particular chakra and place it there, like um, a chakra at the top of the head. If you're laying down, just place it near the crown, one on the third eye, one on the throat, you know, and so forth as you go down. Um, I was lucky enough. I had a, a, a healer that used to do work with me, and she literally had, not only did she have the crystals, but she had the, um, the uh, those little, I, mean, I guess the tuning forks. Yeah, they're called tuning forks. And each, uh, each of them had the different note that went along with that particular chakra. So that's a wonderful way of doing it. But as well, it can be done locally. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head the, uh, the notes that go with each chakra right now. It's been years since I've been a chakra healing practitioner. I do Reiki mostly. But um, it's, the, the information is anywhere and everywhere. Just look for the actual notes, the tone notes that go with it. And by utilizing the, the sound aspect or the audio aspect with the frequency of the crystal, you're really giving it a great cleansing and a great balancing. And that's just a wonderful, wonderful technique. You can do it on yourself, actually, too. You don't have to rely on somebody else to do it for you. Of course, it's much more relaxing. Uh, the same, you know, and that... That's basically it for the chakra uh, healing uh, overview. But I just wanted to say that, and we are going to wrap this up in just a minute, is that um, you can do healing on yourself. Uh, I personally, I don't know if it's just because I, because I work so hard, I want to be pampered, so I don't want to do it on myself. But it can be done on yourself. If you need to, um, you can just place it where, where the energy is needed, place your hands together, do everything you would do for another client or another person or a friend and uh, put your hands where, where it's needed and where you want it. Uh, there's a funny story, and we'll, we'll wrap up today's uh, video with this, is there's a funny story about um, that cats believe that they invented Reiki. So they throw attitude when you're doing Reiki, and they usually will leave the room. I have found that to be true. <laughs> it's very funny. It's very funny. But there is, you know, there's a belief that it's the cat spirits that are the ones that created Reiki, and they get they throw an attitude. But 
anyway, um, again, there's a lot of information available there to you. I just hope that I made you a little feel a little bit more comfortable with exploring this topic and uh, maybe go, doing a little bit more research and helping you maybe find a right gig master or um, finding the right book and pointing you in the right direction. Remember, and, and you know, and actually I gotta take it back, but I don't do Reiki on myself because I do do it in my meditation. Having that energy flowing through you is um, is pretty much to me. For me, it's giving myself Reiki. So um, remember to do that. Remember to um, to really just love yourself, pamper yourself, and uh, you know, touch yourself. Don't forget your hand. You're a real physical body. You're not an ascended light being yet. So um, you're still a physical body that still needs loving touch and still needs uh, to be taken care of and to be loved uh, and to have its energy in balance. So remember that. And I just want you to know that I love you very much and I send you all my love and my light. And uh, if I don't see you next week, I'll probably see you the next week, the following week. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope that you will um, consider making a small donation at the GIC.org as we pass the virtual plate. We can't do this without you. Thank you very much, everybody. I love you. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.